Hi, I'm Bob with JD Squared, and in this instructional video, I will be showing you how to install a water injection system onto the RC6 rotary cutter. I am shooting this video in a live factory environment right now, so I apologize for some of the background noises. However, if you are watching this video, you probably like those noises anyway. Anyway, we're gonna break this thing up into two sections. The first section, I will be showing you how to install the water injection system onto the machine itself. The second part of the video, we will be actually doing cutting with the water injection system, and I will explain the advantages of using such system. Anyway, without further ado, thanks for watching. Let's get after it. In front of me here is the water injection system. Let me first show you what you get, what we'll ship to you. It's going to be a 30 gallon stainless steel tank. We will be including a pump. This, hap this particular pump is a 155 to 300 gallon per hour fountain pump. We obtained it from our local hardware store for 40 something dollars. If this should fail in the future, we do not warranty these pumps. They're so inexpensive, we consider it as a consumable. Having said that, we've never had one fail. Also, Believe it or not, that small pump is an overkill in a lot of situations when you're using water injection. So we provide a valve so that you can choke the flow down. You'll get some clamps and a 10 foot section of half inch clear vinyl tubing. It will be hooked to the pump and it will attach to the injector. And I will show you how to install that here in a minute. We also provide some PVC fittings for the standard layout that you ordered. So for instance, on an RC6 cutter, we have a set a number of fittings that we are gonna supply you. Keep in mind though, if you wanna roll your own, if you've got some other idea, these things are easily obtainable locally. Things that we don't ship with the kit are the sections of two inch PVC pipe. And the reason we don't, it's a 12, uh, 10 foot long piece. They're like $5 from the local store. Shipping them would be impractical. We also can't ship the glue to glue it together for um, uh, hazardous um, transportation laws and all. You also need a couple little tools like a cutter, a screwdriver, a few other things. Another thing that doesn't come with the kit, it's optional, we sell it. It's a um, solution made by a company called Pico and it's a rust inhibitor solution that we highly recommend that you utilize in this system. That's why we use a recirculating system so that we're not blowing through money by replacing that chemical. Okay, let's get on with the next part and I will describe to you the layout that we're gonna be using on the RC6. This is what we refer to as a tube frame. Every tube frame has a water tray with two outlet ports. They are inch and a half pipe size. One will be on the front, one will be on the rear. This is a 24 foot RC6 that we're installing the system onto. So we have two 12 foot sections, which means we have two forward facing ports, two rear facing ports. Now we have supplied rubber plugs right here that we'll be using to block off the two front ports. We're gonna utilize the rear ports for this system. Also, using the PVC that you picked up, you're gonna use the, the rubber 90 degree connectors that we provide and we are gonna attach this to the far rear port on the extreme end of the other machine. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Be right back. I'm back on the tank side of the machine here. I've gone ahead and I've connected the rubber 90 degree elbow to the far tray ran that pipe down here and I have positioned the tank in its proper place. Now what I did was a couple things. I looked inside the tank and inside it you will see a fenced off corner that that's where we're going to put the pump and it's used to try to reduce the amount of debris that can get to the pump. You're going to want that fenced off corner to the right rear of the machine. Also I have gone ahead and I've installed the leveler legs and I've adjusted the tank to about an inch off the ground. I do that because it's easier to blow debris out from underneath it if you're cleaning around the machine. You don't have to, you can set the machine on the ground, it won't hurt a thing. So I've got it in position and what I did, I lined up the front port, right port on the tank directly below the outlet port on this tray right here. 
Onto it, I connected a piece of inch and a half rubber coupling with a four and a half inch piece of PVC pipe. And I made the whole thing so that I could adjust it up or down easily so that it extended into the tank only about a quarter of an inch, six millimeters or so. It doesn't need to go in very far. Then, turning my attention to the extreme end of the machine, when I, when I created the pipe, it turned out that it was a little bit too short, so I added a short extension. I placed a 90 degree fitting on it that we supply, and I adjusted everything so that it too would drop into the tank. That's all there really is as far as installing the PVC lines of the tank. Let's turn our attention now to the pump. This is the pump provided with the system right here. They're fountain pumps obtainable from your local hardware store. With these pumps comes an array of fittings. You're interested in installing the fitting with the half inch barb, and typically it will just press into the top right there. Let's go put it in the tank and start filling it up with some coolant. I'm at the back side of the RC6 cutter right now. First thing we're gonna to need to do is remove the lid off of the tank. I've gone ahead and using the included barb with the pump, I've attached it to our vinyl tubing using a clamp. Now these things are designed to press into the pump. However, if you're concerned about it coming loose, a little bit of instant glue and you're good to go. As I mentioned earlier, there's a fenced off area in the, inside this tank in one of the corners, and that's where we're gonna be placing the pump. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so it's down. We are now gonna align the hoses and the cord up so that when we replace the lid like this, both of those items are coming out of the tank, heading in that direction right there. Let's go on down to that side and hook up the injector next. This is the water injector. It installs into the power head through a port on the rear and there are two set screws back there to lock it in position. Typically it will be installed with the long tube running down the machine. You do have the option of flipping it this way and then if you took for instance a short length of tubing you could place another steel tubing or something into this end and you could extend the water injection down into your tube a little bit further if you desire to do that. However, the typical way of doing it is we will go ahead and install our valve onto the end of the vinyl tubing and then utilizing a short length of tubing, we will go ahead and connect it to the short tube on the injector. Let me go ahead and tighten that up right there. All righty. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place it into the power head, get my hex wrench, and I'm going to go ahead and line up the tube here so that it's in the middle of the chuck. And then all I got to do simply is just tighten up my set screws right here. I can move this easily with my fingers, retighten it a little bit more so that she's snug in position. And I'm good to go. I have my valve right here, easy to get to, and I'm able to inject tubing or coolant into the tubing pretty easily. Now, if you're not using the chuck to grab your part, let's just say, for instance, you're gonna use the universal plate adapter or universal jig plate, I'm sorry. Um, the tube will extend into this opening right here, inject um, coolant into, say, for instance, a rectangle, or square tubing or something like that. Now, also at the rear of the machine, I have gone ahead and I've tie wrapped the power cord and the vinyl tubing to the brackets on the rear tray to keep them off of the ground. The only thing you need to do right now is we have to have a means of turning the pump on and off. They do not come with an on off switch, simply an AC plug. So what we suggest is obtain a surge protector strip, power strip or something like that with an on off button on it plug this into that. Now you could easily position that switch wherever you want to get to fairly easily. That's all there is to hooking up the entire injection system. I think right now what we need to do is put some tubing in this bad boy, fire up the water system, and let's cut some tubing. All right. Okay, very quickly we are going to create a sample piece that we can go out there and cut utilizes the water injection system. So I've come into my office, I've started up Camelot right here. And let's go ahead, first thing we need to do is go to the active profile 
and select the tubing that we have. We loaded 1.66 in it, so we'll do that. Now, there are videos on how to use Camelot. I'm just going through this very quickly. I need to go ahead and add a tube. I will be starting off at the default 000 location. We're going to make this tube 10 inches long. There we go. Now, I want to cut the tube on each end as if it's intersecting other pieces of tubing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another tube. This time we're going to start off on the left side at minus two inches. You can see where it just placed the point right here. We're going to go ahead and add a point. We're going to go up to two inches. And all I'm trying to do is create a little vertical piece of tube that we could subtract from this one right here. Let's close it. Let's go ahead and add another tube. This time I'm going to be starting off at 8 inches and below the 2, minus 2. All right, so there we are. We're going to add a point, and we're going to go up to or over to 12 inches, and we're going to go up absolutely to 2 inches. Okay, there we go. we got two nice pieces of tubing that we can subtract from the other one. Let's go ahead and close that. Let's cut the tube. We're going to select the tube that we want to cut, this one. We're going to check cut with all others. That way we don't have to individually select all the other tubes. And we're going to apply. And now we have our cut piece. Let's go ahead and close, apply and close. And this is the piece right here. We're going to be cutting this piece here. All righty. Let's move to the next step. Okay. I've created my part. I'm going to left click on it to select the part and then I'm going to make a job. Now in Camelot, a job is what it's going to create in order to do the cutting, the marking, scribing, or whatever. So we have a job right here. We have one layer created. It's called cuts and that's because we only have two profiles on this part. They're both cut profiles. Let's go ahead and add an operation to cut those. So we'll have that. It'll default to the layer we have selected. So there we go. We have added a cut operation. And if I zoom in, you could see the black arrowed lines. That is going to be the center of the torch as it's cutting. And it has been offset away from the sign cut path half of the curve width. So that's what you're seeing right there. Now, I'm going to, I would like to go ahead and add another feature to it. Let's place a logo onto our tube. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and put the JD2 logo in the middle of the tube. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select DXF. I'm going to import a DXF file, our logo. It has done it. However, you don't see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit scale to fit right this button here and that will basically wrap the logo around the entire piece of tubing. Now we clearly don't want to do that. So let's reduce the scale to maybe 20 and then we will center the X and center the Y. You can see here now we have our JD2 logo that we're going to be cutting out. Let's go ahead and apply that. And there we go. All righty. Now we need to assign an operation to the logo itself. To create a operation for the logo right there, we're going to go ahead and create a cut operation. You notice that when I created the logo right over here, JD2 logo DXF was added in our layer tree because it's sitting on its own layer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, we're going to add a job, but this time we're going to select the JD2 logo right there. Thinking about shortening up the lead in and lead outs a little bit. And I'm going to select OK. All right. Now we have that particular job right there. We can go ahead and run the pro post processor. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got to make a nesting. Uh, in Camelot, a nest is a, an actual program that you're going to run. So let's call this WI Water Injection sample cut. All right. And then that's going to be our NC file that we're going to be taking to the machine. Camelot has created over here. If we now want to go and animate this particular job so that we can kind of verify what we're doing, let's take a look at it. And the reason I want to do this is because I have deliberately made an error. Let's see if you could pick it up. If I hit animate, we cut the end of the tubing, then we cut the other side. We can no longer cut the logo. The tubing has fallen out of the machine. Let's go ahead and get out of this. Let's go back to our job. And we are going to simply select the layer 
the JD2 logo uh, cut operation, and we're going to move it above the other operation. Now when we go back, we run our post processor again. Yes, I want to replace it. Now if I go to animate, we should be cutting the logo first, which you can see it is doing. So it's doing it properly. Then it's going to go out, and it's going to cut the end of the tubing, and then the section by the chuck. All right, so we verified that we're good to go. We've got our G code. Let's head out to the machine and actually cut this part out now. All right, the first thing we need to do is let the machine determine where the center of the tubing is. You don't have to do this for every job. Typically, once you have those settings, since everything is bolted and fixed, um, those axes are always going to be the same. But to show you how it's done, I'll try to stay out of the way. We're going to go ahead and select the wizard tab. Now, there's different kinds of wizards. For instance, you have a square tube and rectangular tube, and you also have a round tube. We're going to go ahead and do the round tube, and we're going to go ahead and tell it that we have an OD of this tube, I believe is 1.66 OD, and we are gonna go ahead and generate. Now, when we go back to the plasma cut screen, the wizard has created a short stub program that will accomplish what we're trying to do. All we have to do now is hit the go button. It's touching down, it found the top of the tube, now it's finding the center line. And there we go. We have now set the, the center axis of the machine. We can go ahead and load up our program for the piece that we're actually going to cut. I've loaded the program onto the machine. Normally for such a short piece we would use the tube stabilizer mechanism, but for this example cut I just quickly put in a roller plate. Let's go ahead and turn on the injection system and hit the run button. You can see that the production of smoke is much less with a water injection system. I'm holding in my hand the piece that we just cut. I'm also holding a piece that was cut without water injection. Let me place that a little closer to the camera. If you notice, you can see a lot of spray where the molten metal was impinging on the inside of the tube. Also, you got a little bit more dross around it. Basically, it's an okay cut, it's not bad. But look what water injection will accomplish. If you look down the tube, you can see that it's extremely clean. The edges are nice, very little dross. We got great looking cuts all the way around. Reason for that is, is when the plasma cutter is cutting, it's cutting through the top surface of the tubing and all of the spray, the vaporized metal and everything, is impinging on the other side and also heating up the other side. Now when plasma cutter manufacturers create their cutting tables, speeds, you know, things like that. What they're doing is they're basing it off room temperature um, metal. However, since we've heated the other side, by the time we rotate 180 degrees, we are no longer cutting room temperature metal. We are now cutting very hot metal. Therefore, the cutting speeds no longer work properly and you end up with more dross. Water injection is helping to alleviate that problem by keeping everything cool. You also notice that virtually no smoke with a water injection system. Anyway, this is what you get when you inject water. I hope this video has been some help to you. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Have a great day. Goodbye.